Hi, welcome back to WebRTC Tips by WebRTC Ventures. I'm Aaron Symes, CEO and founder at WebRTC Ventures. And today I want to talk with you about four ways to fix your WebRTC application. Now at WebRTC Ventures, we build custom web and mobile applications using live video for clients in a variety of industries all around the world. And many times we have clients come out to us with just a, a plea for help. They have started an application, maybe they're building with WebRTC for the first time, they're still learning how to use it, and they reach out to us based on our years of experience to help them fix their WebRTC application. Now, I have to admit that that's not always our favorite thing to do. Uh, developers always enjoy working on new applications, but especially with the really large growth in live video on the internet and companies using WebRTC, uh, we understand that uh, this is something that companies often need help with and our years of expertise in building live video applications can really be an advantage to them. So we've seen uh, over the course of years of doing this type of work that generally speaking there are four ways to fix your WebRTC application. So I'm going to go over each of those four ways in this video. The first will be to re-architect your media server to choose a different solution be it CPaaS or open source or different types of media servers. Second fix we recommend would be solving those compounding bugs that maybe just a few bugs fixing them is gonna go a long ways towards improving your user's experience. The third fix is to re-architect the rest of your application. Maybe the problem is not actually on the video side. And finally, we're gonna talk about improving the UX and error handling, handling in your application. So those are the four basic ways to fix your WebRTC application. Let's talk about each one a little bit more. Number one, re-architecting your media server. This is the favorite solution and usually the suggestion of customers who contact us. They've started building their application, they made a choice of a particular commercial C pass. Pick any of them, it doesn't matter for this case. We've kind of heard somebody come to us uh, using any of them at this point. Or maybe they started out using an open source media server and they've been frustrated with that. Wherever they started, whatever solution they chose initially in their application, their first choice, their first idea when things are not going wrong, when users are complaining about video quality is typically that we need to switch to a different media server. There's something wrong with the one that we're using. Now, sometimes that's true because certainly every CPaaS and every open source media server, uh, they behave slightly different in different use cases. And so finding the one that's best for your use case, for your business model, may in fact be the biggest thing that you can do to fix your WebRTC application. Um, however, many times we find that's really not the issue. And, and so it's, it's often easy to just kind of blame the CPaaS or the video media server initially because you're, maybe you're having poor video quality. And so that's your first thought is it must be a problem in that media server. But there may be other root causes at play. And so you may be going down the wrong path if you immediately just try to switch to a different media server. I mean, keep in mind, certainly when you're talking about the CPaaS solutions, the commercial solutions, all of these companies have a lot more engineers than you have. They probably have more engineers than we have at Weber TC Ventures. And they have a lot of infrastructure that they've spent years perfecting. It's really hard to duplicate that effort and that expertise in just a few months, even when you're hiring a team of experts such as our team at Weber TC Ventures. And there are so many different choices for CPASSes and media servers out there. You could spend all your time just rotating through those and trying each one and lose that opportunity that you have in the marketplace for your idea. And we've had multiple customers that we've talked to over the years that have literally spun from one CPASS to another and never quite been satisfied. And it's probably because that wasn't really the actual problem that they needed to solve. So, while this is their customer's often favorite solution or their first idea, you'll see I recommend you think about some of these other fixes as well. This You might need to change your media server, but there's often other things at play as well. Now, the flip side of this is the developers, like our team at WebRTC Ventures, honestly, the least favorite thing for us is fixing somebody else's application. Any developer at any company will always tell you that they would often rather rebuild an application from start, then fix somebody else's code, 
that they don't understand, that they didn't build. Maybe they disagree with how it was built. They'd like to try some other design patterns in it. So this is not a fun solution, but sometimes this is the right way to start at least. Because sometimes if you know that there are a few bugs that especially when compounded together are creating the vast majority of your users' bad experiences that are making them complain about your application, if you could fix just a few bugs, not everything, but just a few of those bugs, and maybe for 20% of the effort, get 80% of the bang for your buck, then working on some of these bugs might be the right way to start. And oftentimes for us as a consulting firm, when we're working with a client who has an existing legacy application, they have a lot of problems in it, we may start with first an assessment of their application to take a look at their architecture, their data logs, their error logs, their use case, the problems that they're running into. Um, and that may turn into a consulting engagement where we work on a few of those highest priority bugs to see if we can get a large improvement from just a few fixes. And even if we can't get as large an improvement from that as we hoped, there is a benefit there that at least we've had the opportunity to really dig into your code, get to know your application better, and that's gonna better inform the architectural recommendations we might make as the next step. So fix number two is to try and solve a few of those high priority compounding bugs that are causing most of your problems. This may not be the only fix you need. It may be a good place to start though. Next, you need to consider re-architecting the rest of your application. Not always. <laughs> we don't always want to start from scratch. I said before, that's what developers often love to do is say, well, you know, I don't like the language choice that you've used, or this design pattern you followed or not followed. Can we just start from scratch? Developers love doing that. It's not always the right solution. Sometimes it is though, because the problem may not be your media server. It may not be how you, you know, which CPaaS you're working with. It may be how you're interacting with that CPaaS. Maybe you're not following best practices in how you connect to their SDKs, or maybe you started that code a long time ago and they have some better ways to connect with it now. Maybe your technology choices in building your application were based on the technologies that your company has used for a decade, but now they're pretty out of date and the CPASs, the commercial libraries, don't support those languages that you're using, whether it be it web or mobile. Or maybe the problem is simply that uh, you've got a big legacy application, it's been overthought over the years, it's been overfeatured, <laughs> overdeveloped, and now you've got something that's so complicated and so hard to manage that you know, even your best intentions of, of building a clean interface for the video portion are just not separating the video from the complexity of your application enough. And it may be that you do need to kind of re-architect that application, update some of the technologies that are being used, and simplify the way you're interacting with them. That may be the solution to your problems there. The risk here is that uh, developers do love doing this. <laughs> they may gold plate it. They may just want to go play with the latest programming language they've been looking for an excuse to use. So we have to think carefully before going down this path. The final fixed category of fixes that we typically see in WebRTC applications, it's actually kind of my personal favorite. Uh, from a technology perspective, this is not the most exciting one or most interesting programming one, but it often leads to the largest improvement in user satisfaction, and that's improving the user experience design of your application along with the error handling around it. Because the unfortunate reality is sometimes we can't prevent poor quality in a video call. The internet connection just may not be able to support it for that user where they are or the device that they're on, and there may be nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. But if we make some small UX improvements to the design of our application, it could give a big lift to those users and help make those bad situations as painless as possible. That goes a long way to make them happier. So what we try to do is we try to take actions where we can, and a lot of the CPaaS SDKs will help us with this of uh, degrading the video quality intentionally in order to prioritize audio, turning off the camera automatically, things like that. Um, and then in our user experience, in our error handling, we, we, we try to advise the customer with useful, helpful, actionable error messages wherever we can. For instance, letting them know that they have an incompatible browser. 
or letting them know that they're on a poor internet connection. We're doing a pre-call test as the screenshot here uh, shows where before they even enter the call, testing their network quality, testing their camera, letting them choose their camera and microphone and letting them know if they have enough bandwidth to do this call successfully. And if nothing else, we can at least build in some better error logging, some better handling into our application so that we can have more data to try and diagnose what is the root cause. Because maybe, maybe we don't just need error handling messages. Uh, we shouldn't assume that just saying, sorry, you're on a bad connection is always the right answer. Sometimes there is more that we can do to optimize our video. So really all of these tips work together. Um, and depending on your situation, you may need any or all of them in order to fix your WebRTC application. So if you'd like to talk to us about your un unique scenario, because each one is unique, these tips are not all going to work for everyone. Not everyone needs all of them. There may be other things you need to do to fix your WebRTC application. Contact us, webrtc.ventures. Our team of experts will be happy to talk to you about your use case and your application and apply our years of expertise in building live video applications to you. Learn more about us, webrtc.ventures, and follow us on Twitter, at webrtcventures. Thanks for joining me, Aaron Syme, CEO and founder of WebRTC Ventures, with this WebRTC tip.